Group C sports car racing birthed some of the greatest racing machines ever made. Icons of the automotive world, like the dominant Porsche 956 and 962, the monstrous Sauber Mercedes C9, and many, many more. But for over a decade after the introduction of the fastest class in sports car racing, no French manufacturer was able to win their home event, the greatest endurance event in the world, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Peugeot set out to change this with a brand new Group C project dubbed 905. Peugeot engineers weren't completely out of the loop when it came to Group C racing. In 1988, a Peugeot-powered car named the WMP88 Peugeot set the Le Mans speed record at 252 miles per hour, a record that still stands to this day thanks to the introduction of chicanes to the Mulsanne Strait in 1990. The WMP88 wasn't a full factory effort though. Peugeot provided the power plant, but WM built and ran the car. Perhaps it got Peugeot thinking about an attempt under their own name though, maybe even one that didn't blow up in the early stages. In November of 1988, a team was put together to design and build a Le Mans Group C car to compete in the 1991 season for Peugeot. Led by legendary Jean Todd, the head of Peugeot Talbot Sport at the time, work began to put a French manufacturer back on top at Le Mans. The 905 project marked a departure from Peugeot's established racing efforts, which through the 80s had focused primarily on rally. However, with the demise of Group B, the manufacturer pivoted to racing the rapid 205 T16 in rally raid and hill climb events instead, but these were far more niche than the hugely popular Group B had been prompting the mark to explore new motorsport avenues, ultimately leading them to Le Mans. Peugeot had taken the decision to wait until 1991 to take advantage of a planned rule change that year. The controversial changes overseen by Bernie Eccleston, yes, the ancient criminal one, allegedly, who was running the World Sports Car Championship at the time, saw the list of competitive engines shrink, with smaller 3.5-litre engines favoured by the regulations, forcing top teams to adopt what were effectively Formula 1 derivative engines or face penalties. The first iteration of the 905 was unveiled in 1990, and in an effort to test the car, it was entered into the final two races of the 1990 season. They knew the car wouldn't be super competitive in a field of contemporary Group C cars. They were instead racing the other cars already running in the 3.5 litre class, important for the following year. In this competition, Peugeot did well, proving the 905 had a shot in 1991. The 905 was built around a carbon fibre chassis manufactured by Dassault and was powered by a 3.5 litre naturally aspirated V10, capable of producing around 650 horsepower and very similar to the engines common to F1 at the time. The stage was set for the 1991 season. The beginning of the end for the Group C class was at hand, everyone knew it and they were ready to race. Peugeot didn't get off to a particularly great start. Their car had some reliability issues. Don't make a French joke. Don't make a French joke. But more importantly, it was slower than Jaguar's lightning quick XJR14. The 905 managed a fluke win in Suzuka, but after both cars retired before the four hour mark at Le Mans, the team knew something had to change. If you're enjoying the video so far, give it a like. It makes a big difference. Thank you. They wasted no time at all in completely re-engineering the car, binning the majority of the old body, keeping only the cockpit and totally redesigning the car with the hopes of better aero. The reworked 905, named the 905B, featured a truly massive two-tier rear wing, as well as an optional front wing for even more downforce. This wasn't enough though. What's the point in downforce without power? They swapped in a new engine, another 3.5 litre V10, now capable of producing around 715 brake horsepower. While I'm sure they knew what they were doing from an aerodynamic perspective, the styling may have been collateral damage. I won't go as far to say the car is ugly, though I couldn't disagree, just that it's too weird for me to have a particularly strong opinion at all. I actually think it's really cool, 
but it's definitely not beautiful. Comment below to let me know what you think of it. The new car debuted at the Nürburgring towards the end of the 1991 season, where it once again lost to the Jaguar, but the team was still confident it was going to work. They were right. The following two races at Manicor and Mexico City were won by the 905B. A remarkable turnaround for a team that had started the season so poorly. But of course, for that season at least, it was too little too late for Peugeot. With the championship going the way of the silk-cut Jaguar team and their amazing XJR14. Peugeot had a taste of victory now though. They knew there was a chance for more. And so for 1992, the 905B was back. Unfortunately, in protest to the extreme costs of competing under the new rules associated with homologating a car for Group C1, there was a mass exodus of manufacturers from the World Sports Car Championship in 1992. So bad, in fact, that only three manufacturers competed as factory teams that year. Toyota running the TS010, Mazda with the MXR1, and Peugeot. Peugeot won the team's championship, and Peugeot drivers Yannick Dalmas and Derek Warwick took a joint victory of the drivers' championship. Le Mans was a bit different, though. The ACO, the governing body for the 24 Hours of Le Mans, didn't play by the same rules, much to the chagrin of Bernie Eccleston, and so many manufacturers chose to still compete in the event. Despite this, Peugeot's 905B still proved fastest on Sunday, finishing first and third overall with one car retiring. The winning car was driven by Derek Warwick, Yannick Dalmas, and Mark Blundell. After the complete debacle that had been the 1992 WSC, the competition was canned, and no such competition was to take place in 1993. This proved to be a massive blow for Peugeot, who had secretly been working on a new car for the 1993 season and beyond. The 905 EVO 2 Supercopter, as it was known, looked like something out of sci-fi, way ahead of its time, but alas, it wasn't to be. Peugeot instead took its engine to F1, supplying McLaren until 2000, but perhaps that's a story for another day. Peugeot still chose to compete at the not-cancelled 1993 24 Hours of Le Mans with the 905B. They won again, cementing the car's legacy as a great racing car, but also a controversial one. The regulations Peugeot thrived under ultimately killed Group C sports car racing, which after 1994 wasn't seen again in major competition, at least not leading the way. The fall of Group C gave rise to the far more sensible GT1 class, but of course, this being motorsport, it didn't stay sensible for very long. You can check out one of my favorite GT1 stories here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.